and a little bit more pressure on the quarterback. What were some of the steps forward that you made last week as a defense in doing that? Yeah, the, at least the second half uh, played better. Finally played a good half of defense, I think, in the second half last week. Uh, was better against the run on first down. Uh, made, made a few stops. Still hadn't get creating enough turnovers, but you're making progress. And again, I, I'm the worst guy to have patience, but with uh, you know seven or eight new starters or whatever it is on defense, and then uh, you know a new system, you know every every week I see a little bit of improvement and a little bit of uh, steps that we're taking, which is good. We need to do that with one more non-conference game, and then getting into our eight conference games. I thought there was ways we got to get better, but. Uh, and it was a long trip, a long game. Got back three thirty in the morning or something. Time we get back, but uh, turned the page, and now we're getting ready for a back home finally, and and playing a very athletic, good team at, uh, at our place. So it should be should be a good turnout. Outside of the athleticism, coach, share some thoughts on what you've seen out of Southern Miss. In the yeah, t a typical uh, you know Southern Miss team, really big defensive alignment up front. They've always been known for that. Uh, athletic skill guys. Uh, on offense, so and their coaching staff, they got a lot of experience there. I got a lot of respect for for Will and his staff and the guys they got going on. So be a good, should be a uh, good ball game. Questions for coach? Could you talk about what you've seen from their quarterbacks? Yeah, they played two, three of them in the last game. Uh, Rodermaker was a transfer in. Um, you know, the big strong guy can throw the ball, and then their you know athleticism when they put in number three was was off the charts. I mean, he, he was really impressive as well. So I don't know, you know, where they're at depth depth wise or what their their thoughts process is doing it. And defensively, we're gonna, you know, you can't really have two different game plans. You got to kind of do what you do and then adjust to certain plays. If, you know, if uh, they're gonna do some quarterback runs or whatever when number three's in there, we got to be ready for that. Do you think there's a maybe people overlook how important all the fourth, fifth, and sixth, and seventh year seniors you guys had last year were to maybe the early success you guys had? Uh, a little bit of that, you know, I'm seeing that. That's a good question. Of, um, uh, like I saw last week, if Eastern Michigan had like nine seniors starting on defense and two juniors. I'm looking at Southern Miss has nine seniors or something starting on defense. And, and uh, you're seeing some some older teams, and we've got we've got a lot of seniors, but there's some of them are like freshmen because they're first year in the system. So it's a little bit different. I think typically when that happens, you hope your guys uh, get better quickly as they get you know through the game, some game experience. But you know we we lost you know like a lot of people, we had to replace a lot of guys. You know we didn't we had I don't know we had, we didn't have a big senior class, but you lose guys in the portals and all that, so you lose some experience. Uh, with that, but that being said, whoever we have in there, we expect them to do to do well. So, like Tyler, Tyler's just his first year in the system, and uh, he's learned pretty quickly. But he's still this still his first year in the system. So we, you know, we as coaches, we just got to get him get him ready to go as quick as we can. Yeah, you know, that's how Tyler's played this year. Yeah, I think he's played really well, uh, particularly for his first few you know first games in our in our system. You know, he wasn't here in spring practice. He was doing his duty in Fort Huachuca. So, you know, he had, he had the summer, which were limited there, and then, you know, basically fall camp and three games. So, you know, every week I see, you know, more and more him, him being comfortable with what we're doing. And that's a good thing. I think we, you know, we've got, we've got a deep quarterback room and with some experience. And I thought that was going to be a strength uh, for us. This up right here. A strength for us. Uh, going into the season, and I still feel that way. On time, just how impressive is it, you, as you said, he got here in what, June, maybe late May, and he seems like he has very much command of this offense. Just, and you asked yeah. a lot out of the quarterbacks. Just well, you know, yeah, it's, it's, we do. We put a lot on our quarterbacks' plate, you know, particularly with our tempo and stuff. And, you know, he's a mature guy that, that, that can make all the throws, but uh, he's probably surprised people with his running ability. He can run as well. and. You know, I, I said that in the last game when he was at uh, Louisville, when he was doing everything he could to give us a chance to win the game. I mean, running over people, getting first down. You know, to me, it was inspiring. It was, I think it gave, it should have gave us a lift, and I think it did at times. So, you know, that, that's good to see. And, you, and you, it's a team game, but that guy at that position has to be 
a leader. It has to be a guy that people want to follow and people will play hard for. And uh, the, what, the, what he's shown in, in his time here and what Logan has shown as well. And, you know, I think our guys follow him pretty hard. You talked a lot about like the improvements week to week. Is it disheartening when you make these improvements, but you know, on the scoreboard it doesn't show? Oh, absolutely, hundred percent. I mean, that was just, I mean, just, well, it just kicked me right in the teeth Saturday because you know we we were playing okay at times and and uh, we're in the game, but then we we made a really nice push in the second half in all three phases and had our opportunities and didn't didn't win. So our margin for error. Uh, is pretty thin. And it's been that way last year too. I've said that if you guys remember last year. I said our margin error was really thin, and you know we won some close games, and we're probably going to be in a bunch of close games this year. We we just got to find a way to finish it. And, and I'm not I'm not panicking. I think we we got the guys that can do it. We got the players that can do it, and some of them need experience. And then we've got to eliminate some of the some of the mistakes that we make that cost us the games. But uh, you know, it's it's still a lot. Long season. Like I said we got one more conference or one more non conference game and then kind of a little bit of a reset and then you know we play our conference schedule. So it's it's set up for us to get right and then uh, try to pull some of these out. What do you tell Garrison after he has a pretty good game but you know the last kick Yeah, I didn't even hard. like shoot, you know, he missed one there at the end, but shoot and made the fit the, the, the one that the put us in that opportunity he made was a was a great kick, so you know, I thought he competed really well, and uh, you know, obviously we won, won the last one back. But you know, we need to score touchdowns there anyway, instead of field goals. So that's that's what cost us there, and not getting touchdowns. Does the game like that eat at you more? Do you go back and look one, two, three plays that didn't make it? No, I am a hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you look at out, but there's it's never one play, but there's usually four or five that, like Kylie, just this, this, this would happen. So. You know, I think uh, that's the hard part about close games and overtime games. You probably think, try to think about it too much, and I and I'm the worst one. You got to turn your page after 24 hours, but at the same time, you got to remember what what can we fix that cost us. That that I don't think you can turn over in one day. You got to take a couple of days. Like, what can you fix to so that doesn't happen again? But inevitably. You know, you you know, you got to just keep playing hard, playing playing hard, playing well, and you got good enough players to win, which I think we do. So um, we got to be ready for one this week. Just where's the team morale wise? Obviously, I went through. I think it's good. Time. I mean, last week, I mean, I was in the locker room after Thursday practice. I didn't know if it was it was a lot more pep in their step than I thought going on a trip and all that. But I I want our guys. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe I'm different, but I want our guys to hurt for 24 hours. If we lose or if we don't play well, either way, I, I want them to be upset about it and uh, think about it. But then after the 24 hours, which was, you know, after Sunday, you know, we got to turn the page and get ready to go. And, that, and players are more, in my experience, they, they're more resilient and easier to pop back into the thing than coaches are. I mean, coaches are the ones that, and I don't give pep talks to coaches too much on, on that part. They, they understand that, but we're, our, you know, I got to know them. It's a long season. Like I said, we haven't played a conference game yet. Uh, we only been home one time. And I expect us to play a lot better in this home game than we did in the last one. We didn't play well in the last one, but that's that's a month ago. On that, on the second goal call with the bad snap, would you change anything about your play call? Later? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there's, but there's probably about 25, I would say at least 35 calls in every game that I would change. You call this, you can, Oh, you had a touchdown if you'd have called this, or you called this, you would have had a first down. So, I mean, there's, I think you, the what if game. I'm, I'm not. I mean, I, I think about that all the time, probably too much, and I don't think it's good for me or healthy for us to me to overthink it because then I just, I just get pissed, you know. But, <laughs> uh, but that's, I mean, like I said, there's reality. There's probably every call that I make or we make or any of us make that doesn't have success. I like to have over, you know. You don't have, but you don't have to do over. So that's that's part of the deal. I wanted to ask about your relationship with Coach Hall. He mentioned you you were his quarterback coach at Miami. Can you just touch on that briefly? Yeah, well, but way back in the day, um, um, Jimbo Fisher, who's a friend of mine, and uh, we're from the same area in West Virginia, was working with the Bowden family, and they'd have the Bowden family would have 
Bowden Passing Academy. Uh, this time was down in Auburn when Terry Hill coached at Auburn. And so I was head coach at Glenville then, and that didn't, you know, they weren't paying me anything. To stop, but I would drive down there nine, 10 hours just because there would be 350 quarterbacks and receivers. And it's a great recruiting tool. And I got to hang around with the, the Bowden family, Bobby and Tommy and, and Terry, and then Jimbo, who was a quarterback coach at, at Auburn. So I worked it every week. And you know, after the first time I did it, Bobby kept inviting me back because uh, I was cheap. <laughs> no, no money, and then you know I, I, I worked with them a lot, and it made the connection that with the Bowdens that when I when Tommy went to Tulane, I went with him as a coordinator. So I can't, yeah, I don't, I can't remember Coach uh, uh, is at camp, but about every quarterback that was a, a star quarterback from the South of the United was at those camps. You know, I'm talking about the Peyton Mannings and everybody else. So you know, you got to see a lot of talent and. It was it was a blast. I I think that was uh, some of the most fun I've had was working that camp for three or four days and met a lot of good people there. What is it about West Virginia? Obviously, Jim Bayer, Nick Saban, you just what, what, is there something up there in the water? That, well, there's uh, there's nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> to be so Friday night football was a big deal, especially all the coal miner families. You know, they'd come home and they they'd be the whole town, the little old towns, they'd all be excited about Friday night football and. And uh, you know, so yeah, they, that you know, football was important, and all everybody went out to do it. And you know, you could hunt and fish; it's great hunting and fish. It's kind of very similar to Jacksonville, Alabama, the, the kind of the the locale and the, and uh, you know what what uh, was popular to do in, in the town. And I, I mean, I hunt and fish a little bit, but I didn't have I didn't really have the patience to to hunt or fish, you know, because if you weren't catching cast and you weren't catching something on every cast or I didn't want to sit. I sat in the deer stand for two or three hours, and that'd be about it for me. I, some guys were sitting for eight hours. I couldn't sit in a deer stand for eight hours. I was too bored. So, but football was uh, was important to a lot of us, and you know, it's just kind of ironic that Nick and Jimbo uh, and guys that are that are from that little. I mean, I'm talking about a little thing, all within 15, 20 minutes of each other. You know, went on to do uh, to uh, the college coaching. Thanks for your time, Coach. Okay, thanks. Next up will be our punter, Jack Dawson. Jack. <laughs> oh. Jack, give us a little bit about your background. How does somebody from Sylvania Waters, Australia, get involved in American football? Uh, yeah, pretty much sitting at home one day, just scrolling through Instagram, um, and just saw Pro Kick Australia was on my Instagram, kind of looked into it, figured out Michael Dixon, who was actually at the Longhorns and then went to a Seahawks, he's still there now. He lived 10 minutes from me back home, and I told my dad about it, he asked, he actually knew his parents, spoke to him, said, is my son getting scammed, is this legit? Um, <laughs> Then they said, nah, look, this is the best thing Michael's ever done. And uh, yeah, I haven't, haven't looked back since then. So yeah, it's been an amazing experience since, since getting over here and going through all that. Coach has talked a lot about the specialists taking a lot of pride in their craft. Share with us some of the areas where you've improved the most in your punting game this year. Oh, God. I don't really know. I don't really look too back at it. I just kind of try and look forward each game. Um, you know, especially my first couple of years here, I, I'd look at my stats after every game and you know they weren't as good as I wanted to you know I'd harp on that forever and I think just maturing in the system and not looking at that and growing has actually allowed me to become a, a much better punter instead of looking back and uh, thinking about the previous kick instead of just letting it go about right, I've got one more kick I've got one more kick and just keep moving on. Question for Jack? You, uh, when we see you on the sidelines on on the field uh, during warm-ups, it seems like you really enjoy being part of the team and being with the guys. Is that fair to say? Oh, 100%. Um, you know, I'm an old guy, so you know, I've actually worked like legit jobs back home, waking up at 5 a.m., going to throw uh, bags at the airport and stuff. So I know what the real world, the real world's like. So being here is almost like a holiday. It's just <laughs> every day I wake up and it's just you know something new is going to happen. It's just. You know, such an enjoyable experience. It's awesome. So, yeah. 
What was the biggest culture shock or just when you moved here and came to Jacksonville, Alabama? Um, probably how serious people take this. Cause like back home playing footy, I just, you know, I'd roll into practice, you know, five minutes before, um, or, you know, you just wouldn't take it seriously, you know. I, like my first year here, I'd roll in like 15 minutes before practice and coach was like, where the hell are you at? I'm like, I don't know, I'm just at home playing the game. So it took me a while to like slowly like understand how much money, how many people like take this seriously. And then like, I was like, okay, like I got to lock in like this ain't footy back home. Did you play soccer or rugby or? I played a little bit of everything. Played soccer in high school, played rugby. I was too skinny, so I didn't play rugby for too long. That's too much tackling. So I played Aussie rules, it's my main sport. Um, but yeah, I played a little bit of everything when I was back home. So, yeah. DJ? What is it? Do you know, there's like a very small town a few hours ago, like probably an hour from here, named Sylvania. Have you ever heard of that? No, I didn't actually. Yeah, it's, um, oh, that's awesome. it's in DeKalb County. Okay, I might be a visit. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's special about playing games at home? Um, I say our fans, you know, like even when we were at FCS, I think we had like the highest amount of attendance in FCS football. So I think a lot of these fans are loyal. Like, um, you know, same with like the 2021 season, we weren't great. Um, we didn't have a winning season, but you know, every home game, the place would be packed out. So I think it's definitely the fans is, is probably the best part about it. You know, they get very vocal, they're loud, they love Jack State football and yeah, they stick by us. Jack, thanks for your time. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Next, next up will be quarterback Tyler Huff. Tyler, talk a little bit about the process of learning and grasping this offense to the point where you're at now. Um, it's very different. I've never been in a fast tempo, you know, kind of offense, how they, um, how we run it here. It's always been kind of slow, methodical, huddle up, get the perfect play kind of thing. So um, it was a big learning curve, I would say, you know, in the summer, you know, going fast, you don't really get a chance to look at the entire defense, you know, I'm, all right, I see the safety rotating, whatever kind of thing. Um, you just kind of, everything's like on the snap, post snap, um, a lot faster um, processing that is needed. So. Uh, I will say it did take a little bit of time, you know, going through camp, actually getting real reps and seeing everybody move um, post-snaps and pre-snap. Um, it's a little bit different, but I think I got a good grasp of it now. You completed a pass to 10 different receivers on Saturday. Just share a thought about the receiver room and the tight end room and what makes that group special. Yeah, I mean, there's this is the most talented football team I've been a part of, obviously. Um, very, very good group. I mean, I think we probably got 20, 30 guys and go out there and do the same thing. Um, I mean, I have faith in everybody. I mean, we practice really hard. Um, you know, there's no, like, starters only get reps with starters, that kind of thing. I mean, everybody gets reps with everybody. So, I mean, I'm throwing it to everybody, you know, walk-ons, guys who are on our scout team. So, I'm, I think that just kind of goes to show that, you know, I'm getting reps with everybody. Everybody's getting reps with everybody. So, um, you know, have that confidence with every player who's out there. So, it's good. Questions for Tyler? Uh, you've already, in just your short time, you've already established yourself as a guy who won't back down. You've you're willing to take a hit and give a hit. Where does that come from? Um, I mean, I've always been a big believer that, you know, quarterbacks should be football players too. Nobody else slides. Um, I mean, call it how you want. I mean, I always thought that was like, you know, kind of soft. Um, you know, quarterback's got to be the leader. You know, nobody, if you're running back or lineman, you know, you go out and make a run and you slide, you're two yards short the first down. I mean, I kind of makes me mad if I see other people do that. I mean, that's soft. Um, you know, guys are going to see a guy who wants to play for him and die for him on that field because everybody else is. I mean, especially the line, they're busting their butt for you. I mean, they're killing themselves for you every single play. So, I mean, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to put my head down and get a first down. Um, I think I just, you know, build some trust um, with the team, you know, earn some respect for them. You know, when I'm out there, you know, I'm going to give them my all and uh, they should be confident in that. On the mental side, just, and I guess leadership, just how much crossover is there between football and then what you've done with your military service? Um, I'll be honest, I haven't done a whole lot military-wise. I mean, I am in the reserves, so, I mean, I have not I have been in some positions, like leadership positions, um, so I am a second lieutenant. So my role, I guess, is platoon leader, so I would be in charge of 40, 50, you know, uh, soldiers. But again, being in the reserves, you never really get that much um, 
um, leadership role or leadership time where you're actually in charge of all of them. Um, so honestly, I haven't experienced too much of that crossover. Obviously, a lot more football. 180 guys in the room. You know, everybody's looking at you. So I will say, you know, if it's between the two, I see a lot more leadership roles or I guess responsibilities on my part, football wise. Tyler, right. thanks for one more margin. Are you good? Sure. I you know, want to give everyone else a chance to. <laughs> um, you've, you've had a lot of experience coming here. Uh, what did you learn before you got here that might have helped you uh, adjust to, to stepping in and playing so much so early? Yeah, I mean, I'm a six year senior, so I mean, I've played a lot of football. Um, started all five years, so this will be my sixth year now starting. So I have a lot of experience playing a lot of games. Um, I think my last two years at Furman were great. Uh, we won a, won a lot of ball games. Uh, very grateful for my time there. Um, and it's a big game, it's a playoff game, so I think I've just kind of seen every, um, I guess, process of football, play of football, um, situation of football, and um, I've done it multiple times. So I think that kind of helps. You know, now I've, I think I've seen just about everything. Um, obviously, it is different FBS level. Everybody's a little bit bigger and faster, but. I mean, I think I played in a pretty good conference at Furman um, and SoCon, so it's really not much of a difference, but I think just having so much playing time, it just, just helps with everything. On Saturday, it, it was a good day for Cam Vaughn. Could you talk about what you saw from him and, and why he seemed to, to play as well as he did? Yeah, I mean, Cam's a freak. I mean, he's 6'3", and you know, can move. I mean, he's very fast, everybody can see. Um, I think the thing was, I think we just had to give our receivers a chance. Um, a few times Saturday, I threw him. I didn't really give him a chance, but I think he just, and we've all found it out. If I just put it anywhere near our guys, they're going to come up with it. Uh, especially with Cam. I mean, he's, he's going to go up and jump for it, dive for it, do whatever he has to do. Um, he's really improved. Um, he's, getting, he's getting more and more comfortable. You know, some games he starts, some games he doesn't start, but he, he, uh, he's getting to the point now where he doesn't matter. He knows whenever he gets on the field, it's his time. And he's shown that. And I think the coaches put a lot more, um, have a lot more faith and trust in him now that he's not going to mess up or forget a play or anything like that. So, good. What about Jack State? <clears throat> oh, sorry. What about Jack State kind of wanted you to come? Obviously, there was a, there's a lot of quarterbacks already here. Just kind of why did you want to come here? Um, honestly, I mean, I'm not a big guy. I'm, I don't really wow anybody on film. So I wasn't really recruited. Um, really didn't have many options. It was here, really Arkansas State, or go be a backup at a Power Five. You know, I had a few of those kind of opportunities. but. Came to Jack State, you know, obviously winning program, wanted to play for a legendary coach, Rich Rod. And um, I mean, I knew there was opportunity for me to come in and play. Um, so I think it was just a good good spot for me. And I mean, I, I don't regret anything. I'm very grateful being here. I know we're behind the eight ball for sure, being 0-3, definitely not what anybody wanted. But I think we're, like everybody's been saying, we're taking steps in the right direction. But it's just time to get over the hump now. Uh, you had mentioned that the pace of play was something you had to adjust to. You talk about that adjustment and when you felt that you were really comfortable with it. Yeah, I think it was, um, honestly, I think whenever I just got maybe the full reins of the offense, um, I don't know how to put it. Um, I mean, I've never been in a position where I had to play, you know, split reps like that, how I did Coastal. Very, uh, very hard to play like that. Um, I understand why he did it. Um, again, I had to prove myself, so I fully understand it. But, um, you know, I just didn't really feel good in the pace and the offense. Um, at that point, just, you know, rotate every other drive. It's kind of tough. So I think Louisville game, whenever I kind of had my foot in in the offense, I think everybody, you know, I think I earned their trust a little bit. So they gave me the reins a little bit. I think um, at that point, whenever I understood kind of how Rich Rod, you know, does his stuff on in a game day now, how he runs his offense in the actual game, I mean, I think, I think Louisville was the time where I got comfortable. Thanks for the time, Tyler. Appreciate you doing this. Thank you all.